Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to talk to the witnesses, really all of you, on a, on a topic that I think should garner really strong bipartisan support. And that's the issue of communities that are truly underserved. Mm -hmm. And by this, I mean they don't have any water and sewer. They don't have flush toilets. They don't have running water. We have that in America. Unfortunately, we have a lot of that in Alaska. And um, I think it's an issue that we just, that particularly after the pandemic, when communities are told you need to wash your hands five times a day and people don't have running water, um, it's imperative that we address it. This has been a big issue. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your help on this issue in this committee, but we have to do more. These are, by the way, some in my state, some of the most patriotic communities in the country with more veterans in these communities than you can believe. So, Mr. Oley, Mr. McNulty, other members, how do we get to this issue? And it frustrates me, you know, when I hear communities, we had a big debate on Flint, Michigan, that was an obviously horrible issue. But the discussion there was how do we deal with aging infrastructure? I think there's an even more important issue. How do we deal with communities that have no infrastructure? Zero, zilch. So any thoughts on that? How we can take care of these people first before we look at upgrading systems? There are Americans, thousands in my state, who have no running water and no flush toilets. They live like they're in a third world and they have diseases and health challenges that reflect that. How do we put an end to this? Mr. Orley, why don't you start? Senator, Senator Sullivan, Sullivan, thank you very much uh, for the question. And I've been up in Alaska and seen some of the communities that you're referencing. And you're right, uh, we need to focus specifically on these communities where there is no infrastructure. Uh, I would say, first and foremost, we need to both ensure there's funding there, but technical assistance that's really tailored to communities that can be culturally appropriate for Alaska Native communities or other, other indigenous communities that understand the complex issues that you're dealing with in Alaska and other really remote areas of the country to ensure that whatever infrastructure we're able to put in place works in that environment and works yeah. for that community and also obviously is affordable in the way that it's, that it's implemented. Other panelists, Mr. McNulty, do you have a view on this? I certainly agree with what Mr. Oley has said. Uh, you know, I think we're going to have to be creative. Um, you know, centralized systems aren't always going to be the best option. Uh, we'll have to look at more community specific systems, perhaps, that would be managed under an umbrella of a larger utility. And I think that's one way that uh, we can assist communities without uh, without the population density to have a, a, a larger, a large centralized system or to transport water long distances or wastewater. Let me, let me uh, dive into that a little bit more. And, um, and the other panelists, I'd welcome your views on this too. How do we, it's not just money, although money matters, right, in, in this situation. And to me, again, you know, we have this uh, euphemism in Alaska we call honey buckets. It's not sweet as you would imagine it's the opposite where people literally have to bring their human waste out of their house and dump it into a lagoon that's america it shouldn't happen it shouldn't happen um but how do we design systems in communities like this to where if we have the money to set them up we are able to maintain them in a way that is more of a uh, simplistic design that's not so complicated that breaks down frequently another challenge we have in Alaska. And I'll, I'll just open that up to any of the panelists. Well, this is Shelley Chard. I'll start um, and just say, you know, we have to be creative. We have to use the tools we have, and sometimes we need to go find new tools. Um, an area in Oklahoma that I'm very proud of, uh, we have a funding agency coordination team. It involves uh, all of the federal agencies that have funding, it involves all the state agencies that have funding, and it involves our tribal partners, which we have 39 recognized tribes in Oklahoma. Uh, we work with them, we bring in community leaders, we work with them to form a rural water district or rural sewer district, if that's appropriate. We work through the various funding and we look at 
um, low technology that they can actually operate, that you don't need um, experts coming in and a lot of chemicals being shipped in, uh, things that we can do to get them on a path to uh, sanitation that most of us take for granted. Great. Thank you, Ms. Chairman. And uh, this is an issue I think we need to work together on in a bipartisan way. No, no American citizen should live in communities that have none of this, that most Americans take for granted. 